This GCSE Geography Revision Show is all about the DRC and the Rosto model. We will be looking at where we think it should fit into the model overall and be able to give reasons for this. Remember to regularly pause the presentation to help review your notes and prepare you for a practice exam question at the end. This whole unit we are doing for the dynamic development is based upon us studying one country in depth. We have chosen to look at one of the poorest countries in the world, the Democratic Republic of Congo, or the DRC as we know it. Can you identify where this country is on the map? You should be able to place your finger on the screen where you think it is and pause the show to check in a second. Hopefully by now you're able to identify its location. Throughout the Dynamic Development Unit you'll be looking at the DRC so it's vital we know where it is and can provide a description of its location for all case study answers for this unit. You need to memorize the sentence on the screen and use it for all future case study answers at the start of your response. Remember, geography is all about real places and our place is the DRC located in Central Africa on the equator. For a long time, the world nations were simply split into the developing North countries and the developing South countries based on their wealth. The imaginary brand line, as shown on the map, helped show the rich North and poor South. It's located roughly 30 degrees North of the equator. The rich North consisted of USA and Canada, Europe, Russia and Japan from the Northern Hemisphere, along with Australia and New Zealand from the Southern. The majority of the rest of the world was classed as the poorer South based on their GDP per capita. Today, we find this too simplistic a model and use alternative ways to classify countries depending upon more than just the wealth of each nation. Today, we find that countries need to be classified according to several development indicators, not just all about wealth of a nation. The world is roughly split into three categories. ACs, which are advanced countries with high levels of development, such as the UK. LIDCs, the poorest nations that have the least development, such as the DRC. And also EDCs, emerging developing countries, which have made a significant advancement forwards in their development. Having three categories is much more useful than what we saw with the Brandt line gives us a better understanding of different levels of global development. Geographers though also use the Human Development Index with a scale of 0 to 1, combining three key indicators including life expectancy, income and education. It is thought that this will give an even more accurate understanding of the level of development of different nations. The map shows how different countries compare. The UK is very high up the index with a score of 0.892 compared to the DRC with just 0.344, one of the smallest scores in the whole world. The HDI index combines these key indicators to give us more understanding of development. How long somebody lives on average can be determined by their work, lifestyle, access to medical care and diet within a country. Education also helps determine how advanced a country can be and closely links in with income and life expectancy to help us assess the quality of life for different people around the world. Pause the show and make sure you understand the Human Development Index and how it combines a range of indicators and the value of the DRC and UK before moving on. If I was you, I would also copy HDI lies to help me remember what they mean. The Rosto model is shown on the screen. It tries to break down all global nations' development into these five categories. The idea is that all countries will develop in the same way, going through each stage of development over time, from a traditional society right up to a highly developed, high mass consumption society. The UK is an example of this, being one of the richest nations of the world. The DRC is, however, nowhere near as developed as the UK. We will look more closely at the model to see where we think it should fit. Stage 1 traditional society is a very simplistic place. Here everything is very basic with the economy based upon religion and subsistence farming. 
which means they collect natural resources around them to survive. Their lives revolve around the seasons and the growing of food. There are only a few places in the world where these occur, such as in the Amazon rainforest or the Penang in Borneo. Although the, the DRC is not as advanced as the UK, it is not as basic as a traditional society in most of its country. People in the DRC live in large urban areas such as Kinshasa, in regular homes, and don't all just work on the land. Stage 2 is a lot more advanced than traditional societies, and is where the DRC fits on the model. In these countries, they have things we would expect to find, such as basic infrastructure like roads and railways. By having roads and railways, it allows greater trade, especially when excess goods can be sent to a seaport and then exported abroad. By exporting goods, normally primary industry-based goods, this will help the nation advance. At stage two, manufacturing industries also begin, especially the processing of the local materials. These nations also start to encourage TNCs to locate in the country. The DRC fits all of this category because they have a whole host of things, as can be seen on the screen in the grey box. The DRC is a lot more advanced than traditional societies, but has not yet taken off in terms of its development on the Rosto model. Stage 3 takeoff is a more industrial society than the DRC. Here, secondary manufacturing is very important. These countries have lots of factories and use robots to make things. The extra wealth generated in society means that extra finances and tax can be used to invest in social causes such as education and health. In these societies there are lots of TNCs in the country and lots of rural to urban migration as people leave the countryside in search of work in the cities. We can see that the DRC is not yet at this stage because it is still heavily primary based and has not attracted many TNCs apart from Orange to invest there. This may be because it's still very dangerous and risky to invest in the DRC. This stage on the roster model is for advanced countries like the UK. Here, there are mainly tertiary services with less people involved in manufacturing and agriculture. People use their wealth to buy or consume expensive high-end products. They use their money to employ other people to work for them. The DRC is clearly not at this stage because they do not have the finances to be able to buy designer goods. Rather, many people use their money simply to buy food in order to survive. It is very important for us to be able to justify where the DRC is on the Rosto model. This slide helps us to do that. We know that the DRC is not just a stage one traditional society, because not everyone works on the land or lives that are in rural areas. The DRC is in stage two preconditions for takeoff because it's still dominated by primary industry such as the mining of coal, sand and diamonds. The DRC has large cities such as Kolwezi and Bakwanga and Kinshasa where nearly 9 million live. The DRC has also invested in improving infrastructure, often through help from abroad such as China so that it can trade more. It also has attracted a few large multinational TNCs, such as Orange, to invest there. The DRC has not yet managed to be stage 3 takeoff conditions. This is because it's too reliant upon primary industries with not enough secondary manufacturing being established. Only a few global companies, such as Orange, are willing to invest in the DRC, which means it has yet to properly expand its economy. Pause the show and make sure you know exactly why the DRC is found in stage 2 of the roster model, but also why it is not classed as stage 1 or why it has not yet reached stage 3. You need to be able to justify the position of the DRC on the roster model for your exams. Roster's model, like most models, is rather simplistic and does have a number of problems worth noting down. Roster's model was based on European cities development and assumed each country had the same resources to start with. It doesn't take into account modern globalization or the adverse effects of colonialization, such as Belgium's effect upon the DRC. Pause the show and make a few notes on the drawbacks of the Rosto model. We have on the screen a typical exam question. I have boxed the key instruction, justify, which means I must show reasoning. 
I've also underlined the key parts so I know that the question is really asking. Explain what stage on the Rosto model the DRC is and why it's not stage 1 or 3. Remember with case studies, always start your answer by mentioning the country. For this question, you should begin by stating the name of the country we are investigating. Why not start the exam question using the italic sentence shown on the screen?